Given a data set, any raw observation or score can be transformed to what's known as z-score by subtracting the raw score from the mean of the data set and divide that difference by the standard deviation of the data set. So this process of converting a raw score into a standard score or z-score is called standardizing. Or sometimes uh, it is called normalizing uh, but uh, sometimes it can be confusing to use normalizing because it can mean something different too. Anyway, um, this way any score can be expressed in terms of how far the score is away from the mean in the unit of standard deviation. So the raw scores above the mean will have a positive standard scores, whereas those below the mean will have negative z-scores and so the mean itself then will have a z-score of zero so these z-scores are typically used for comparison purposes for example you may you may want to know you know where your body weight stands in the population so if you know the population mean and the standard deviation then you can convert your weight into z-score to see how different you are from the typical population weight, which is the population average weight. And more generally, so if a variable x follows a normal distribution with a mu and a standard deviation of sigma, so here x represents um, any random variable. And this squiggly sign is read follows. So if a random variable x follows, this big N represents um, the normal distribution. Right? And the normal distribution has mean of mu and the standard deviation of sigma. Right? So this whole thing on the left <clears throat> is read if a random variable x follows a normal distribution with the mean of mu and the standard deviation, then it'll follow a, another normal distribution with the mean of zero and the unit standard deviation when every score in that random variable x is standardized by this uh, Z transformation or the, um, the standardizing process. So we can convert any normal distribution into a single standard normal distribution. So that's what that means. So here is an illustration of how a normal distribution becomes a standard normal distribution after uh, standardization. So the distribution in light gray uh, on the left is the original distribution following a normal distribution, right, with the mean of negative 2 and the variance of 0.5. So this is a variance instead of a standard deviation because the reason um, that will become clear later on. But so that x, so that is the mu of the distribution, and this is sigma squared. Okay, not sigma. I told you already uh, before that sometimes uh, the normal distribution is specified by either standard deviation or the variance. Okay. So the mean of the light gray distribution is here, right? And the standard deviation is about, um, the spread is about here, right? That is um, actually square root of 0.5, right? Standard deviation. Now, if we follow the set transformation or the uh, standardization using the equation previously, so, the x is the, the, all the scores of the original distribution in light gray, right? So you plug in all the numbers from the original normal distribution and subtract these scores from the mean of that distribution, 
right? Which, which is negative two. And you divide this difference by sigma, right? So because in, in this equation, because of the square root, that means this point five here is actually expressed in terms of variance instead of a standard deviation, right? So that's why I uh, told you that this point five is um, <clears throat> variance instead of standard deviation. Now, if uh, the x um, goes through this transformation, then the resulting distribution is in this black um, distribution on the right, which is the standard normal distribution. So now the all the scores are the z scores converted to z scores following the normal distribution of um, with a mean of zero and a unit standard deviation. So <clears throat> any normal distribution can be standardized to follow a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a unit standard deviation. So um, let's work with some example question to illustrate how we can calculate Z scores in practice. So let's assume that we know um, the uh, distribution of intracule pressure in Glasgow region, and this is known to be a normal distribution with a mean of 17 millimeter mercury and a standard deviation of 5 millimeter mercury. Now, you measured an intracular pressure of a patient um, from the clinic, and it turned out to be 27 millimeter mercury. Then what is the Z-score for this patient's um, uh, intracular pressure is the question. So this is a very simple question where you can just plug in the given numbers into that uh, standardization equation. So the equation was z equals x minus mu and sigma. So all you have to do is to plug in the numbers. Now, what is the um, the x? So x is the original score that we want to convert into the z score, which is patient's intracular pressure twenty seven. Right? And then you subtract this from the mean of the population, which is 17. And you divide this difference by the standard deviation of the population, which is 5. So now the top 10, and that's 2. Right? So the standard, uh, the standard score of that you know, patient's intracranial pressure is two, meaning that um, his or her intracranial pressure is actually two standard deviation above the mean, uh, which is considered quite high. So the um, standard normal distribution has all the properties of normal distribution. So you remember that the 95% uh, the of the data uh, would fall within plus minus two standard deviation under a normal distribution, right? So um, the exact value, in fact, is 1.96 uh, instead of a two. So um, they just used um, the rounded number to make it simpler, but uh, the exact value is plus minus uh, 1.96. Um, so within these two values, you can find the 95% of the data. And then, um, so these set scores, uh, as I said, um, you know, tell you how far a score is from the mean in the unit of standard deviation. So that said, Z score of 1.96 or two um, after rounding, means that the score is actually two standard deviations above the mean, whatever the original score is. And the sign tells you if the score is below uh, or above uh, the mean. And the total area under a Z distribution is 
one. Um, so when you normalize anything, um, then it becomes one, uh, any normal distribution. Right? Then the area under the curve is just uh, one, and which is just basically 100%. And the remaining area in both tail ends, I right, see this um, kind of a reddish area, is 2.5% each. Right? Because the middle 95%, then, then the remaining tail ends are 5%. Um, you know, by combining these together. So each, because the normal distribution is symmetric around the center, so you split that 5% into exact halves to these two tail ends. So for various reasons, um, there has been a need to calculate any areas under the curve, and this can be done using uh, calculus uh, the integration right if you want to do it by hand and by convention uh, area under the curve in calculus is always um, calculated from the negative infinity so from the far left here right up to a certain value z right so the area under the curve is starting from the left into a certain score z so that's how you uh you know perform the uh integration in calculus and to make it easier to find the area under the curve instead of you know performing this calculus each time you know what we need to find the specific area under the curve um, people publish a table of area under the curve like this one one for the standard normal distribution uh, even about like 20, 30 years ago, um, I needed to use this table to find out a specific area under a standard normal distribution. But uh, thanks to the uh, current computing power, now we can calculate any areas under the curve by a few button clicks, even with better precision. Anyhow, the table provides um, the area under the curve up to any z-scores of 2 decimal places ranging from negative 3.49 to positive 3.49. So um, this range, I mean, you can go you know, further uh, beyond the 3.49, but um, so this table actually provides the area under the curve uh, with a precision of four decimal places, and it pretty much covers all the area under the curve, right? So it becomes just a pretty much one. So they stopped at this range, right? Negative 3.49 to positive 3.49. So the table on the left shows the area under the curve of Z distribution up to any negative scores and any negative Z scores with two decimal places from negative 3.49 up to the halfway, zero. On the other hand, the table on the right shows the area under the curve of Z distribution at up to any positive Z scores with two decimal places passing the halfway of zero to positive 3.49. So using this table, then let's try to find the area under the curve at Z score of negative 1.96. So we're going to use the left um, table. And to find out, you have to find out the Z score of negative 1.96. So the far left column are the, um, is the list of uh, the z scores uh, with a single decimal places. So you find out negative 1.9 first, going down the column, right? So that is the negative 1.9. Now you can find the remaining, the second decimal places from the other columns. So you're going down to find 0.06 and the area under the curve is where these two, you know, the row and the column meets. So that's 
0.025. That's where the uh, the area under the curve at set score of negative 1.96. So as we learned before, right, the left tail. So this is basically the left tail, um, the area under the curve, the left tail um, up to the Z score of negative 1.96, which was 0.025, right? So if we go back to this graph, right? So it is the, uh, the left tail area up to the Z score of negative 1.96, and it was 0.025, which is 2.5%. And from the table, uh, the number is exactly the same, which is 0.025. So this is how you read um, the table to find the area under the curve up to a specific set score with a two decimal places. Because uh, normal distribution is such an important distribution, People came up with some technical terms to describe uh, distributions breaking the properties of normal distribution. For example, we say a distribution is skewed to the left or right when the symmetry from the center is broken. And this typically happens when there are outliers in the data set, and especially when the outliers are on the right of the um, distribution then this dis distribution uh, has a positive skew or is set skewed to the right. So as we just have seen, um, the distribution is pulled to the right because of the, um, the influence from the outliers, right? On the other hand, um, when the outliers are on the left of the distribution, then this distribution has a negative skew or is set skewed to the left. And as you can see, um, the distribution is pulled to the left when there are outliers on the left side of the distribution. Another term, kurtosis, is a term to describe the uh, pointiness or tailedness of a distribution. So here is our normal distribution. And when you have more scores close to the center, then the resulting distribution looks fatter compared to the normal distribution. We call this distribution platycurtic, having a negative kurtosis, where platy means wide, broad in Greek. And a platycurtic distribution has thinner tails at both ends. On the other hand, a distribution is called a leptocurtic, looking more slender than the normal distribution. And this distribution has positive kurtosis with thicker tails, meaning um, it has more extreme values at both ends than the normal distribution. So um, this illustration compares the parts of box plot to the uh, corresponding normal distribution side by side. And as you can see, the box plot is showing a perfect symmetry around the median for a perfectly normal distribution. So, um, so this first normal distribution is actually showing uh, the corresponding parts of the box plot. So we have Q3 and Q1 which is the IQR, right? And by definition, this IQR contains the 50% in the middle of the data as shown here. And when the length of whisker is 1.5 times IQR, then the upper whisker is actually corresponding to 2.698 sigma standard deviation. And then the lower um, whisker is actually corresponding to the negative 2.698 standard deviation. And up to that, um, 
you know, boundaries, two boundaries, each contains 24.65%. So if we combine these two together, then it'll become 49.3%, right? Yes. And 49.3% plus 50. So that's 99.3 and remaining tail ends will only contain 0.7. So each um, will contain 0.035. So 0.7%. So that's um, 0.035%. So um, in decimal notation, it'll be uh, smaller. And this one, the bottom normal distribution shows the um, basically the um, the sixty eight percent, ninety five, ninety nine point seven percent rule, where we can find sixty eight percent in the middle within plus minus one standard deviation, and the remaining proportion will be then um, thirty two percent, right? So each contain about sixteen percent. So um, this is the kind of a side-by-side -side comparison between the box plot and the normal distribution. So because normal distribution is perfectly symmetric around the center, the location of all three central tendency measures are the same under the normal distribution, right? However, when the symmetry is violated, right? So in the box plot, even, even though this band is median, um, if the distribution, uh, if a distribution is a normal distribution, then it also represents the location of mean and the mode. But you know, when the symmetry is violated, um, in other words, if a distribution is skewed, then the locations of those three central tendency measures start to separate relative to the direction of skewness. So here we have a normal distribution curve on top and the respective box plot representation at the bottom, where Q1, Q2, and Q3 represent uh, corresponding quartiles on each representation. And as we have seen, like before, uh, the box plot is also perfectly symmetric around the median, but when there is a um, negative skew, right there, the mean is most affected. So the mean is pulled away uh, from the center to the left, then comes median in the middle, and the mode is on the right. So when you have negative skew, then you have this long tail to the left side, which is represented by the long lower whisker of the box plot. And also the location of the median is not uh, central in the middle of the box, right? And the upper whisker is shortened um, when there is a negative skew. On the other hand, um, the positive skew now will change the position of the mode and mean um, reversed um, with respect to the median. So the location of the median is still in the middle of mode and the mean, but then again, mean is most affected. Um, it is really sensitive to the extreme values or outliers in the distribution. So with a positive skew, the mean is pulled away to the right from the center, and it is actually shown by the uh, uh, elongated upper whisker in the box plot, and then shortened um, lower whisker in the box plot, and again, the location of the median in the box is off. So the box plot can um, indicate the, um, the violation of symmetry from a distribution.